This Valheim guide has everything timestamped below in the description, but we'll be covering the following. How to craft a full set of bronze weapons and armor and upgrade it fully so you have 36 armor in total. And how to get the best early game weapons like the fine bow and craft fire arrows and a sledgehammer that does huge area of effect damage. We'll also be covering where to find tin and copper and how to get certling cores to build a forge and a furnace so you can create tin and copper bars to make bronze and then start upgrading all your gear. All I ask in return is that you take a moment to like the video. But if you have not watched my part 2 guide on killing the first boss Ekthir, please watch and do that first because it drops the materials you need to craft a pickaxe to mine tin and copper. That part 2 guide is linked in the description below. But now let's begin part 3. So the first thing we need to do is use wood and the hard antler which we got as a drop from the first boss and then come over here to the crafting workbench and then we need to craft the antler pickaxe. This is going to allow us to actually mine for the first time in the game. And also to quickly mention I'm using a flint axe. This is like the best weapon you have access to currently. We will be making a better one shortly but I recommend that you actually craft the flint axe and then you go ahead and upgrade it to the maximum amount of damage you can. As well, I also recommend crafting leather armor and upgrading it too. It's definitely worth doing and it's going to give you a lot higher armor value. Armor in this game does a tremendous amount for you. The other thing I recommend doing is crafting yourself a wooden shield because these are so useful early on for avoiding any damage at all. And then once again, you're going to want to go ahead and upgrade this as well. So in order to find copper and tin, you need to go from the meadow starting area and find the dark forest area. If you look on the top right of the mini map, as I cross over into this area, you'll see the name actually changes to tell me I'm now in the black forest. On the map, this kind of looks like a bit of a darker woodland area just over here. And you're going to find tin near the coastline and I'll show you where to find the copper deposits in a moment. And as you guys can see, the trees in the meadow are completely different to the trees in the Black Forest, which have these huge pine trees. So once we're in the Black Forest, you're just going to head towards the coastline of the Black Forest biome area. So we're running along the shore here, as you guys can see, and you're just going to want to look at the rocks as you go along the Black Forest coastline. And here we go. Here's some tin just here, or actually be labeled tin deposit. And you can go ahead and actually mine it with your pickaxe. And this is going to drop the tin we need to combine with the copper to then make bronze. Which I'll explain how to do in a moment because we need to make a furnace as well for that. But you're just going to run along the coastline and essentially just pick up all of this tin ore. And there you go, now you have six tin ore unrefined. Now to find copper deposits, they are more centralized within the actual Black Forest itself. We've lapped out here and there's actually a copper deposit right in front of us. They're kind of, they're labeled as well, so you really can't miss it if you're standing on it. But they've also got these sort of coppery golden ore veins. Now if you don't have a pickaxe to mine it, double click on the ore deposit just to give it a copper label so you can come back here and mine it all later. But I'm just going to start mining this right now. So as you guys can see, as you're mining this, you're going to be destroying the whole copper deposit and it's not going to respawn or anything. So now you guys can see I have two unrefined copper ore and six tin ore. So after you've got yourself a bunch of tin and copper, go and put it in your base. And the next thing we need to do is build a smelter and a charcoal kiln. These are going to allow us to process the ore, but in order to make them, we're going to need a certling core. And these can be found once again in the Black Forest dungeons, but they are filled with skeletons. So before we actually go inside one of them, I do recommend you actually craft yourself a Warhammer. This is really easy to do. All you need to do is grab yourself an axe and then you need to go and find a pine tree. So we can see a bunch of pine trees just here. So let's go ahead and chop this one down. They're also labeled in case you're really confused, but shouldn't take us a moment but the difference is between pine trees and normal trees is that oh my god they can still kill you if they land on you but they actually will drop core wood which you need in order to craft the warhammer let's go ahead and finish chopping down this 
There we go. So now you can see we've got a bunch of core wood here. The next thing we're going to need is some deer head trophies. Let's take that out and shoot the other one down as well. Yeah, look, he's dropped a deer trophy. So let's go ahead and pick up that. So now we're back at our crafting bench. And in order to craft this weapon, you need to upgrade your crafting bench to level 2. Which means you need to craft a chopping block. Which you can find here in the crafting menu. And a chopping block just requires 10 wood, 10 flint and to be next to a workbench. That's going to upgrade your workbench to level 2. And then you'll be able to craft yourself the stag breaker which is a sledgehammer. So you need 20 core wood, 5 deer trophies and 2 leather scraps and you can craft this weapon. So this is the sledgehammer we just crafted. As you can see if I hit it, it does a massive AoE damage attack. So it's so so good for obliterating skeletons with blunt damage. So now in order to craft the charcoal kiln and the smelter to process our ore, we're going to need to find the Sertling cores. And they can be found once again here in the Black Forest area, just in randomly generated dungeons. So here's one just here. You can see it's kind of got like rock pillars around it and then it's got a sort of tunnel leading underground. They are all over the map. They're pretty easy to find really. You'll come across them if you're walking through the Black Forest. They usually have skeletons around them as well. And they're of varying sizes. So you might need to visit at least a couple of them before you get all the Sertling cores. However, I've gone into some before where I've got like well over 10 cores in one dungeon. It's all random so you never really know what you... So essentially you're just going to keep exploring these caverns. And eventually you'll come across these. These Sertling cores. This is what we need. We need 10 of these in total. So go ahead and grab this one and you're going to find chests with various loot in too. Now these mushrooms are great uh, if you're low on food you can actually eat them to regain your stats. Kind of want to go through this stage by stage just taking out all the skeletons as you go so they don't overwhelm you. And by the way these skeletal remains can be used to upgrade armor if you pick up the bone fragments so it's actually worth grabbing those too and we are done with this dungeon we only got one core sadly so here once again in the black forest we've come across another type of dungeon now this dungeon is kind of like recessed within the earth so you kind of don't notice it until you actually get close to it but once again this is exactly the same as the other dungeons usually a bit bigger though and we can find saltling cores within them the burial chambers you also sometimes find some spooky ghosts as well, which is very exciting, I know. Hello, sir. How are you today? Now, um, I should tell you about parrying. So, if an enemy attacks you and you block just before it hits, like... Okay, well, he didn't hit me. Attack me! And you block just before it hits, he actually gets staggered, which allows you to finish him off really quickly. It's a lot harder to do when there's multiple enemies around you, but otherwise it's a super effective technique that you should definitely be trying out. Oh, we have a ghost here. Do take care of these. I'm going to actually backtrack and just pelt them with arrows here. Then we can get our big hammer out and yeet everybody like so. This is why the hammer's so good. You literally just stand in a doorway and spam the attack. And here we have another saltling core. Fantastic. Or sertling core. And there's another one. Let's grab that. Well, hello there. Okay, so this is actually a spawner and it will carry on spawning skeletons. So it's a really good supply of unlimited bones if you need them. I do recommend actually leaving it alive or considering to do so. But a good way of killing them is once again using our big hammer. Let's just go ahead and yeet them. They're actually running away, they're so terrified of me. Stand in the doorway here and go ham on them. Each time you'll stagger them so they won't actually be able to recover from each attack before hitting you again. So there we go, they're all dead and we've destroyed their spawn point. Let's get our torch out again. And we can see there's another Sertling core just here. And there's also some Amber Pearls which you can use with the merchant. And then we have a bunch more gold as well. 
and rubies. And another Sertling core here as well, fantastic. And as I said earlier, you'll find rooms within the dungeons where you'll luck out and get over 5 cores at once. But hold on to them all if you have too many since you also need them to craft portals which are also necessary for the third boss and beyond. Because the world is huge and portals are the best way to travel in between. So now in total we have 13 Sertling cores. We only need 10. So as you can see we can just put this anywhere we want and we can also craft the smelter as well like so. Now I'm going to go to my base where I already have these built. So in order to use the charcoal kiln you just need to put wood in it and then it will start burning and the more wood you add, the more sort of charcoal is going to fall out of it. But after a few seconds or so, it will just deposit some charcoal. That's why I have this kind of barrier around it. So it all just drops in one position. And with that charcoal, which has just dropped the coal here, we can pick that up and we can actually add it to our furnace. So we can put it in here. Currently, it's already got 20 coal inside it, so it's ready to start burning the ore we gathered earlier. Now, I recommend you put in five of the tin ore and then swap them around and put in five of the copper ore, like so. And then, as you can see, it's going to start dropping out copper and tin ingots. And now we just need to sit and wait for them all to process. Make sure that your kiln is fully stacked up with coal which you can make obviously with your charcoal kiln. And then you can go ahead and go to sleep and by the time you wake up, most of your stuff should be processed completely. So in the morning, you'll be able to pick up all of your copper and tin. So now we have some copper and tin bar. We can actually build a forge. I've already built a forge over here, but to build one, you need to go to your crafting menu with the hammer and you need to click on the forge. As you can see, a forge requires six copper to craft and some stone, coal and wood. After you've crafted the forge, you can go ahead and use it. And you can now see that I can make a bronze bar, which requires two copper and one tin. So I'm just going to go ahead and craft myself some bronze bars. Now, for the sake of this video, I've pre-crafted myself 35 bronze bars. Now, obviously, bronze is quite hard to make. You guys now understand that. So what do we want to craft? Well, the most important thing to craft before we craft ourselves bronze armor is actually the bronze axe, because that will allow us to chop down a certain type of tree that will allow us to get fine wood. So we can then make a fine wood bow. Now, obviously, you can also use the bronze axe as a weapon, but if you're going into the marsh area, I recommend the bronze mace. That's very effective. Um, I don't recommend bothering with the bronze sword yet. The bronze buckler is very good, so suggest. And then we also have the bronze plate leggings and plate curus, and also the helmet. Now you'll notice each one of these starts off with an armor value of 8, which is huge. And you can also upgrade these even further as well. So let's go ahead and craft this. We also need some deer hide as well, which I have in my inventory. If I upgrade the bronze plate curious with another free bronze, it's going to increase the armor by an additional two. Now, the drawback of obviously wearing heavy armor is the movement speed is minus 5% per piece so in total you have minus 15 percent movement speed sacrifice is so worth it and obviously if you also upgrade your bronze axe as well you'll increase the damage it does too so as you can see i've upgraded my armor to level 3 bronze and each one of them gives me 12 armor so i have a total of 36 armor which is obviously incredibly powerful while my bronze buckler will block 55 damage I should also mention that we can now craft ourselves a cultivator as well. So let, if we go ahead and craft this, you can then see that you can cultivate the ground ready to craft fir saplings, pine saplings, beech saplings, and also carrots. And you can also turn areas back into grass as well, which I don't know about you, but if your whole fortress is just, you know, mud, maybe you don't like that. Now the next thing I'm going to be showing you is how to get fine wood to create a fine wood bow. So to get fine wood you need to chop down birch trees using a bronze axe. Any axe before that like the stone axe or the flint axe won't work. 
to find the birch tree, you just need to go to the meadow area, which is like the starting area in the game. This is the easiest place to find them without having to go anywhere dangerous or treacherous. And then you're just going to find a birch tree in the surrounding environment, which looks like this white one just over here. So let's run over here. This is birch. Let's grab our axe and then just start hitting it. Excuse me, sir. Let's chop down this birch tree. And then we can start chopping the logs as well. Like so. And as you can see, this is fine wood. So we pick up all the fine wood. We now have 28 fine wood. And we can now look at making ourselves a fine wooden bow. To craft the fine wood bow, we're going to need fine wood, core wood, and two deer hide. Now I showed you how to get the core wood earlier on in the video. Just check the timestamp below if you're confused about that. It's in the dark wood forest. So let's go ahead and craft this now. 32 piercing damage. Now, as for the arrows that you're going to be using with your bow, I highly recommend using fire arrows. The next video is going to be about killing the second boss um, in a really, really easy way. It's linked below in the playlist if you are interested, and I'll see you there. Goodbye.